Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome faculty, uh, students, uh, uh, health pr uh, practitioners, and um, uh, everyone else who is with us. We, of course, um, have a great uh, honor to welcome the advisory board for the National uh, uh, Collaborating Center for the Determinants of Health. Um, uh, I'm pleased as well that we have a diverse crowd. We have um, members from uh, uh, international and uh, local communities. We've had a number of speakers and uh, uh, they all tell us that uh, when we look at the international, key national and international leaders believe that figuring out how to turn around the widening health gap between the most advanced and the least advanced Canadians is one of the most critical challenges facing us today. I look forward to the new insights uh, this evening, and I uh, challenge uh, us all to look at uh, the world through uh, uh, the health lens. Thank you very much. With no further ado, I would like to introduce um, Robert Strang, um, our Chief Public Health Officer in Nova Scotia. He's also the chair of our advisory board, I'm thrilled to say. Um, he initially started uh, his field in family practice and community medicine at UBC, um, University of British Columbia. Um, he served as an Associate Medical Officer of Health in British Columbia for a period of time, um, moved to Halifax to Capital uh, District Health Authority, um, was acting Deputy Chief Medical Officer and uh, has been the Chief Public Health Officer for a period of time now. And in particular, he's been uh, provided very critical leadership to renewal of the public health system in Nova Scotia that I think we're seeing some very good results from and has worked to create policies that that support the development of healthy communities and better health for Nova Scotian families. And he's going to speak to us tonight about um, health equity and health and how Nova Scotia is addressing this aspect of health, thinking big about health. Good evening, everybody. Thanks, Connie. I don't couple of definitions just to make sure we're all on the same page and I asked Connie about this. Some of you may know this already but we talk about disparities, inequalities and inequities. So disparities and inequalities are really just observations or measurements of differences in health status in, in populations. Inequities are really uh, those disparities uh, or inequalities that are avoidable, uh, preventable and therefore we consider them unfair or even unethical. So there's a value judgment when we talk about inequities to so just make sure that we're on this because often those terms are used incorrectly so to, to just to be clear on those. So in my role as Chief Medical Officer of Health I, I legislatively I'm responsible to identify and speak to threats to the health of the public in Nova Scotia and I believe there are two uh, fundamental and very linked uh, threats to the collective health of Nova Scotians and Canadians today. One is the economic issues around our health care system and the continual, continual drive to spend more and more on health care. If we understand the determinants of health and what truly makes us healthy, yes, access to good health care is important, but it's only one small determinant of health and frankly, access to good education, uh, good income, uh, fairly distributed income, literacy, all those other components are much more critically important in terms of are we healthy as a community and, and, and as, a, as a province and as a country. So with the continue, if, unless we do something, uh, if we spend more on health care, and there's always pressures to spend more on health care, but more health care frankly doesn't mean better care and better outcomes, spending more money. But if we, the more we spend, if there's a finite pot of, of, of tax revenue, either federally or provincially, the more we spend in healthcare, there's less for social supports, less for education, less for transportation systems, et cetera, et cetera. So we are in the process of making ourselves less and less healthy because we're not able to invest into the determinants of health. So that's an, that's, I, I view that as a considerable threat to our collective health. Um, and we also have to understand that, how does this link into inequities? Well, if we know that uh, inequities uh, are, are, are dispar differences in health status, that a significant amount of avoidable 
utilization of the healthcare system and the need for healthcare is driven by the inequity. So just about every health indicator we choose to look at, people who are lower as you go down the socioeconomic gradient or the education gradient, those people have, and communities have worse outcomes in, in any of those health indicators, meaning they require more health care. Um, so that key critical to developing a sustainable health care system is actually paying attention to and reducing inequities. And the power of Twitter today, earlier today I was able to get this quote from uh, Dr. Anna Reid, who is the current president of the Canadian Medical Association, who was presenting at the House of Commons Finance Committee today. And her quote was, governments need to recognize implications of social determinants of health on the demands for the healthcare system. And I quote from her earlier this year at a 2012 health summit, if we are looking at making our healthcare system sustainable, we need to look outside the system at the upstream causes of ill health. So spending more in healthcare is a critical issue and is linked into uh, part of the significant part of the solution is addressing disparities. But health inequities in and of themselves are a health threat, as I said earlier. As you go down the gradient, your risk and, uh, of, of having adverse health outcomes in just about any, re any realm you can think of is, is increased. And so Sir, Sir Michael Marmot succinctly summed this up when he presented this year to the Canadian Medical Association conference in, in uh, Yellowknife where he said, social inequity is killing on a grand scale. Social inequity is killing on a grand scale because most of the inequities are avoidable, but it's about what choices we make. So it, that's pretty profound when you really start to unpackage that statement. So, but it is a significant threat to our health, our current inequities. And unfortunately, the, the direction we are taking in Canada is we're increasing inequities. We were becoming a more divided, less fair, less less equal society, from economic pressures to globalization to corporatization. But at the end of the day, I do believe this is, it, we do make choices about things. And there are certain political ideologies that currently exist that are in power, that are making choices, that are making us a less fair, less just, and less, more, more unequal, and therefore less healthy Canada. So what are we doing about that in Nova Scotia? We have made a decision in 2006, the provincial government said, we need to look at our pu public health component of our healthcare system. We'd just come out of SARS and all provinces were saying, wow, we really were dodged a bullet because SARS only happened in Toronto, but it could have happened broadly and we were all very much stretched. So we went, we've gone, we went through a big review, two-year review, and a key component of that was we come, a, a report that landed with 21 recommendations. The first recommendation was we needed to have a, we had a very fragmented, dis, uh, disorganized focus on our approach to public health. We needed to have a collective vision. So we went through a 2008 to 2010 with a little road bump of H1N1 in the middle of, 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 of really a strategic planning process uh, for public health. And part of that strategic planning process, we actually went out and looked, listened to communities broadly and said, what are communities needing from public health? And we heard very strongly that communities were asking public health to play a much stronger role in inequities and social determinants of health. So we made a very concrete decision. We had, in 2010, we established six key principles, which we call the stakes in the, uh, for public health. They are the stakes in the sand around which we say, this is how public health is going to operate. This is what we're committed to. And stake number five is a commitment to working on social justice and determinants that they must be the underpinning of our work. We're now developing standards which help govern, you know, really explicitly articulate what public health work is and we have a deliberate focus on social justice and inequities there. So what does that really mean at the end of the day? It means that we are paying very deliberate attention to how we deliver public health programs and services to ensure that we take into account the inequalities and inequities that exist in our communities and that the way we deliver those programs are meant to decrease inequities. Because if you, we deliver things poorly, we can actually make those who are healthiest even healthier 
and not pay attention to those who are least healthy, and we widen the gap. And so we have a deliberate focus on, on decreasing the gap. We make sure that we are, myself and Dr. Watson Creed, who's here, medical officers of health, we have voices within the healthcare system. And one of our roles is, is, is to bring the voice and bring the evidence and the, and the call for decreasing inequities where we sit at other tables with all our other clinical colleagues and decision makers in the healthcare system. We are working with communities to use the data and stories from communities to really speak publicly about what is, it's great to use a term like inequities, but what does that really mean to a single mom living here in Antigonish and tell, help her tell her story and unpackage that so we can bring it alive what inequities really mean. We're making sure that we're involved in where we're working to get a voice from public health in a broad range of, of government policy decisions. And one of our objectives is to, we're working to implement, uh, get approval and implement a health impact assessment process that would be used for major government policy decisions across government in Nova Scotia. But lastly, this is about creating social change. And it'll only happen if communities' voices are raised. And so public health are really committed to using our our, our energy and our expertise to move alongside our, our colleagues and our partners in communities to help communities find their voices and to speak out and take action and to develop a fairer and, and, and more equitable um, Nova Scotia and more equitable communities. And we're very fortunate, and I'll close, with having Connie and her team here located at St. of X right here in Nova Scotia to work very closely with them in, a, in this uh, joint agenda. So thank you.